All right, let's jump right into it. So March is going to be very interesting for Bitcoin. Uh, January, February, back to back new highs. And now we're finally getting another correction uh, that, in my opinion, was overdue. Now the price action is setting up for March. Is it going to continue what it did in January, form a flag and then eventually break out? Or is this the end right here and we're going to form a flag and break down? or even just break down from current levels. It was just about a year ago, we had one of the biggest corrections ever for Bitcoin, all the way down to about $3,000 due to COVID-19. Now things are more bullish than ever. Bullish news coming out every day, pretty much. We're getting closer and closer to adoption every day. Uh, so will Bitcoin continue this climb in March to new highs? Things are looking good so far. So you better stick around because I'll show you why in this video. What's up? It's John here with Currency.com, at RealJohnDo on Twitter. Bitcoin been having a pretty good run this year. So we're going to continue to give you guys another update. And we're going to be looking at March. So I got some things to share with you, uh, such as the latest news, where the price action could be going, the trader sentiment. And also we'll talk about some important price levels to look at here in a minute. And before we jump into everything and get it all started, I just want to say thanks to all the new subscribers to the channel. We're going to continue to grow. And also we will continue to put out all these videos for you guys. So you guys don't have to waste any of your time. We'll have all the latest news here right on our channel. And everyone watching right now, if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to smash that like button. And for those of you who are new to the channel, also don't forget to hit that subscribe button if this is something you want to see more often. Okay, so first things first, let's cover the trader sentiment on currency.com for Bitcoin. Uh, right now, it's showing 68% buyers and 32% sellers. And Bitcoin did drop from that $58,000 level testing that $50,000 support right now. We'll see if that holds and the price is leaning towards the high of the day. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you some price levels to keep an eye on for Bitcoin. So the first level of support, we're right around it right now, the $50,000 level, which is right now the 20 day moving average. And if we break this level, then we'll have to keep an eye on around that $40,000 range, uh, which is the 50 day moving average right now, and also the highs from January. And if that doesn't hold, then we need $30,000 to hold which right now looks like the yearly support. And that also is where the price has ranged the most so far this year. But towards the upside, if Bitcoin continues this bullish trend, we'll need to see how the price reacts to all time high at $58,000. Either we go up and test it, consolidate there right at resistance, and then eventually break out to new highs, or we're gonna go up there, test it, and break down and start trading in a tighter range. And if we make it past that level, then we'll need to watch $65,000 which is the next psychological resistance. And if we get past there, then Bitcoin continues going into price discovery. And this is some news we just got today at the time of recording. Jack Dorsey's company Square has almost doubled their Bitcoin holdings, added now 3,318 more Bitcoin to their stash. And Jack also still continues to give back to the Bitcoin community. And he just announced that he donated one Bitcoin to a nonprofit Bitcoin development organization. And North America's first Bitcoin ETF had an explosive debut here in Canada, $564 million in assets, and it generated about $80 million in volume in its first trading hours. And this is a Canadian ETF. So shout out to all the Canadian crypto uh, and blockchain companies and individuals pushing forward for Bitcoin and crypto adoption. So some words here from the one and only Michael Saylor. He says that 1 billion people will store their life savings on their phones in Bitcoin by 2026. That's what MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor had to say in an interview with CNBC. His company now owns about 70,000 Bitcoin. And this was after the hearing uh, from US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, which described Bitcoin as inefficient. Michael Saylor in his interview, he had to say that one day, seven to eight billion people will have a bar of digital gold on their phones and they will be using it to store their life savings on it. This is only about five years away uh, so if you are subscribed to the channel, you can do that right now. You can come back and review this when we talked about it and see if Michael Saylor's prediction was correct. And after all of Michael Saylor's moves, some analysts are now saying that Tesla will double down its Bitcoin holdings. It's expected now that up to 5% of public companies will follow Tesla's Bitcoin purchase. Uh, according to one analyst from Web Bush Securities saying that companies will start FOMOing into Bitcoin very, very soon. And so far right now, Tesla has made about $1 billion uh, in paper gains from its Bitcoin trade, which is more profit than they've made 
from the 2020 EV sales. And one big company getting into Bitcoin right now is BlackRock. Uh, they said they started to dabble in the crypto, holding some portion of what you hold in cash and things like crypto seems to make some sense, said the CIO of BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock is one of the world's largest asset managers with more than $8.6 trillion under management. And Bitcoin finally accelerated past that $1 trillion market cap level um, when it did hit all time high from last week at about $53,000. And we did go all the way up to $58,000. Now we're sitting right at around that $50,000 support range, which is currently holding as support. But then Elon also added in another tweet that Bitcoin and Ethereum are starting to look pretty high right now. And that statement couldn't have came at a better time because a few days after that, Bitcoin started to fall, went all the way down to about $45,000, uh, liquidating about $5.9 billion uh, in futures trading. And according to data, a lot of traders did buy the dip. So as of right now, it seems like the bull market's not over yet. But let's jump into the platform and talk about the price action. So since the beginning of the year, Bitcoin has been in a nice steady uptrend. We did get that correction here in January for a few weeks. The price did form a flag, which eventually broke out right at the beginning of February, making it past that $40,000 resistance that was the January highs. And then we continued all the way up to about $50,000. And then now it's looking like we might get the same situation where the price forms a flag. We had one here in January and we possibly will have one here for the end of February, beginning of March. And if things do remain bullish, and we can expect to break out of this, test that $58,000 level and continue our way up. Or it can be bearish where it breaks down and then we start testing some support levels all the way down to that $30,000 level where I do see a nice big bounce happening there. A lot of people are looking at that $100,000 target uh, for Bitcoin and we still got a long ways to go. But I think once we do get there, a lot of price targets will start to increase as more and more companies start buying Bitcoin in the speculation that it becomes a global reserve. But in the short term for March, let me talk about possibilities I see happening if we do continue this bullish journey. I think this correction that we just had here, uh, it is good for the price. We had a nice long run up, so it's good to finally consolidate and build a strong support range above $50,000. Now for the next few weeks, I think we could have a tight trading range uh, between 58,000 and right around here at about 45,000. If you look here in January, when we did have that correction, the price came right down that 21 day moving average, which is where we're at right now. And then that finally broke and it came down to a 50 day moving average, which ended up bouncing off that level and breaking out to new highs. We can have something like that happen again, but I don't think this time around it would make it all the way down at a 50 day moving average. I think would stay in a nice range close to $50,000 and then finally break out. And I'll be looking at about $65,000 uh, for some time in March. Could even have the scenario where we have a V-shaped recovery on this 21 day moving average. Something like this where we bounce from here, go up to test the highs once again, small handle, cup and handle formation, and then a breakout to make $60,000 into a support range. And from the current price levels that we're at right now, that is about a 25% jump. Bitcoin right now, it did have about a 20% correction, uh, which is normal in bull markets. And looking at the volume in the RSI right now, the volume is starting to dry up a little bit here. And these past few days was the most selling that we've had uh, since that correction that we had in January. So we could see something similar happen this time around. If you look at the RSI also, it is sitting right on that 50 level. It was overbought. There was a bearish divergence in the RSI, as you can see here. It had a lower high. And in January, the RSI corrected all the way down to about 40, 45. And right now the RSI is close to 50. So it could be time for some consolidation here. We may dip back down towards the 40 level in the RSI if we do do the flag formation and then go back and overbought. Or if we do have that V-shaped recovery, then the RSI will start to go back in the uptrend now until we make a new all-time high. But if it doesn't work out that way on the downside, let's say Bitcoin does fail form a flag or a v-shaped recovery and a breakout then i can see the price heading down to forty thousand dollars testing that support which was a previous high from january and we could even have a false breakout making a lower high with a new downtrend all the way down to about that thirty thousand dollar level and that would bring us down past the 50-day moving average 
and also back in the yearly support range right here that we were hanging out in in January. And also remember that just about a year ago now, Bitcoin had one of its biggest drops ever, bringing it down to about $3,000 US when COVID first hit us. So looking at Bitcoin right now, compared to back then, Bitcoin is up quite a bit. And depending on how much sell pressure we do have coming right now, or even we could get some bad news, Bitcoin could also even form a bear flag here, eventually break down to test that 50 day moving average level at about $40,000. And that would be the second time we test it within a month range. That is one of the last lines of defense uh, for the bull trend. Then that $30,000 will be the next level to watch. That does not hold and things won't be looking good for Bitcoin. But even if we do continue to dip going all the way into March, and if we do consolidate at that $40,000 level, then I'm expecting to bounce the test $50,000 again. And if we make that into support, then Bitcoin will continue to go test the all time high at about 58,000. And that's all I got for this video on Bitcoin. My bullish price target for March right now is between 65 to $70,000 and bears. I'm looking down at about 40,000 and 30,000. 30,000 is my worst case scenario, which I would expect to become the lows of the year. There's still a lot of bullish news to come out for Bitcoin to surprise us. A lot of things can happen in 2021 and also keep in mind that the stimulus checks are still on the way in the US. It is expected to come in March and we know what happened last time there were stimulus checks. Price only went up. But we'll talk about that in March when we give you guys another update on Bitcoin. Unless a major catalyst happens before then. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. Uh, feel free to leave your comments below. Let me know your feedback on the video or what I possibly missed or what I should cover in the next video. And also don't forget one more thing, smash that like button if you haven't already. Don't forget to also check out the channel for other videos. And I hope to see you guys again in the next update. It's John with Currency.com. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.